Yes. Hey, good morning, everyone. Thanks a lot, Tim. And, and uh, um, thanks for the plug on participating in, uh, in open source projects. I'm going to give, uh, just for you, I'm going to give uh, people a chance to participate in two great open source projects that I'm going to talk about this morning. So uh, good morning, everyone. And I'm thrilled to be here. Especially, I don't have to, I only have to drive here. I live in Portland, so thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoyed the sunshine yesterday. We do get much more sunshine than this, but, you know, and it will be, I, I think it's going to be more sunshine this afternoon. So, um, great to be here, and, um, and, and one of the things that, the thing that I'm going to talk about today is um, open source, in um, open source in, in new places, or uh, what I would call open source in new normal. So um, when, we, you know, when, we, when we look at open source and open source penetration, um, it is, it's truly everywhere, except in few things that, is, uh, that it's been very, very difficult to see open source in. And, and these are the two areas that I'm going to be focusing on today. Um, and uh, uh, some of the, w when, you look at, when you look at things like data center, when you look at things like, uh, uh, like IoT, embedded, uh, open source is it. Open source is the normal. Um, you know, uh, 14 out of the top 15 uh, uh, data centers on, on this planet pretty much run all open source. Um, billions and billions of devices all run open source. But there are areas where open source had not really been uh, uh, used that much. And what I want to do today is, and what we are launching today is, uh, uh, are a couple of, of, uh, a couple of projects. And what's unique about them is that these are areas where open source had not been used. And, and for for, for reasons, at least uh, uh, reasons that uh, people try to use, uh, we think that uh, this glass barrier is, um, it's the right time uh, to start breaking that. Um, I'm specifically, the projects I'm going to talk about deal with, uh, with firmware. Uh, and with, I'm going to talk a little bit about our other project uh, 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 that deals with safety critical systems. These are things that typically use uh, very closed, very proprietary systems. Sure, there is some open source, some open source base that you, people use for that, but typically it is, uh, uh, it is closed systems. So uh, the first project, which we announced a couple of days ago, is, is a hypervisor. But this is not your average hypervisor. This is not a data center hypervisor, or this is not a hypervisor that you, like, hey, I want to run a couple of uh, uh, Windows guests on it. This is a hypervisor that is a very, very lightweight and is designed with, uh, it's designed with safety critical systems in mind. So this is a hypervisor that, uh, uh, that we've been working on at Intel where um, it is designed so that there are safety critical domains uh, that can run on top of it and non-safety critical domains. And you'll see a lot of usages, especially in modern computing, a lot of usages in li like this, with particularly around edge computing, industrial, and, and, and automotive. And I'll talk a little bit uh, uh, more in a little bit about, uh, about the, the usages of, uh, of this project. So this project is called ACORN. And, um, and, and it, it, it's, been, uh, it's been quite a struggle, quite honestly, to get something, you know, uh, um, a hypervisor so thin that it does support, you know, uh, real time. It, it, it does have all the full featured of a hypervisor, but yet it is very, very small. I think the hypervisor is uh, one sixth or one seventh the size of a typical hypervisor from, from a line of code. It's like 25,000 lines of code. And, um, and it does, one of the key aspects of it is that it does allow the mixing of a safety critical operating systems with, uh, uh, with uh, just a non safety critical operating system. And, and this is a major change, because if you want to run a safety-critical operating system 
on a non uh, on on uh, on a on a virtualized in a virtualized environment the entire chain must be safety critical therefore you have to have a hypervisor that uh, uh, that allows you uh, to do that so what are the use cases for that there's plenty so um, a, a, a good example is automotive so automotive uh, in the very old world in automotive you had um, uh, many uh, CPUs. So you're beginning to see consolidation of CPUs where, and uh, of, of the infrastructure where, uh, uh, where you do have uh, software-defined infrastructure in, in, in the car. So you could have, um, so a typical uh, configuration, you would have your instruments cluster running on one operating system, your infotainment system would be running on, uh, uh, on a different uh, operating system, your navigation would be running as, a, as another guest, and some of these can be uh, 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 critical systems that really, really need to adhere, would be a critical system operating system that, that is, needs to be certified as such, and and some of them, obviously, you have some tolerance as a normal operating system. So what Acorn does, it gives you the infrastructure to create that software-defined infrastructure in something like a car, where you are able to run safety-critical systems and non-safety-critical systems on one hypervisor that, is, that, is, uh, uh, that operates in that real-time environment and so on. So uh, we're very, very excited about this. Um, Acorn was uh, just launched, so you can learn much more about it in the Intel booth, and obviously just go on the website projectacorn.org, uh, and, and if you want a project where you, there is lots and lots of room to be a subsystem maintainer, I mean, there's so many pieces to the, to the Acorn project. If you, if you want uh, um, a, a project that is exciting, modern, uh, new, um, please, I encourage you to, you know, to participate and, and, uh, and contribute. And um, as Tim said, you know, hey, you want to be try out maintainerships? You know, we have a place for you probably here. Okay. Um, so let me talk about the second project. Uh, that, uh, we, w that we just launched today. And, and, and I want to talk about the story of the project. You know, uh, th these are a couple of Intel engineers, uh, Liam and Keon. And, and um, the story, I, I, don't know how many, I, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Intel Mino board. It's the open source, uh, open source hardware that we've developed. Uh, and, uh, and it's been used, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, reasonably, and one of the objectives that we've had in the open source group at Intel is that we really had the desire that everything on that board, everything that we run on the Mino board is open source. And, um, and we were almost there, except one thing, the some pieces of firmware. And, and Keon and Liam finally um, uh, decided that, okay, we're not, we, we will have the entire thing as open source. And the big piece that was not open source is the entire change of, uh, chain of audio and voice. And, and this is when they just went in and like, you know, hacked and hacked and hacked and came up with an open, completely clean room, uh, open source audio. And this is, by the way, this is an Intel part. This is like, so, uh, and there is, uh, uh, just like any piece of hardware, there is a proprietary firmware, and along with a, quote, a, a firmware developer kit that allows customers to customize the firmware and so on. So, um, so what, they, what they came up with is, um, is um, an entire, open source firmware stack, including the firmware itself, the drivers, uh, tools, imaging tools, emulators for debug, the entire thing is open source. And this is truly an open frontier. It's an open frontier in, in terms of uh, our uh, uh, having uh, an area that's typically been entirely 
proprietary, at least the firmware parts and below. And, and, and it's always been difficult for people who build systems to deal with uh, any kind of customization because of the proprietary nature of, uh, of low-level firmware. So, um, so uh, what these guys are created and you know, uh, what uh, a lot of our partners, by the way, completely jumped on, uh, um, you know, uh, obviously this is now being launched by Intel and Google. Uh, uh, when, when a lot of our partners started seeing uh, um, uh, what we're doing in, um, uh, in sound open firmware, uh, uh, really they started uh, uh, innovating in ways that we never knew. And the, the, the amazing thing about it is that how fast this progressed from a couple of engineer hacking to create a firmware to a full featured stack and to a full, uh, that is actually full features with, you know, uh, uh, with all the uh, noise cancellation, noisy room, uh, uh, you know, all the features that you would expect from an entire audio stack plus a very, very easy way to customize it without having the need for all these complicated firmware developers kit that typically only like very deep experts would know, uh, would know how to use it. So again, you know, uh, uh, you want cool maintainer ships? We have them for you in sound open firmware. There is lots of part in sound open firmware that, you know, uh, uh, that the small team of engineers that's currently working on it from Intel and from our partners like Google, you know, uh, that are working on it. I think it is probably one of the most exciting areas uh, to start seeing open source, you know, uh, go down to firmware. And, and it would be great to see, you know, uh, 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 more uh, firmware that is uh, moving towards open source. So, um, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, again, what I would like to close with is that um, you know, uh, we are, I, I think that with these two projects, we are beginning to uh, break a glass ceiling and um, of uh, the safety critical nature, uh, safety critical uh, type software with what we are doing with, uh, with Acorn. And I think you will start seeing from us and hopefully from many others, you know, uh, 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 more safety critical uh, uh, systems and system software uh, uh, becoming developed in open source. And, and obviously, we would love to see more and more uh, open source firmware. Uh, would love for all of you to start participating. And, you know, lots of material on these two projects uh, 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 at the Intel booth. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks.